Okay, great. Um, can everyone see the presentation? Fantastic. Okay, awesome. Let's get started. Uh, before we jump straight into the workshop, uh, it's just a few words about who we are. Uh, open Zeppelin is a company with the mission to protect the, op the open economy. We focus on cybersecurity in the decentralized space. Uh, we have worked with some of the top um, top projects in the space. Uh, we provide both security audits and products geared towards security in the blockchain space. So uh, probably many of you know us or have worked with the Open Zeppelin contracts, which is the library we provide free for use and open source for building blocks uh, for building smart contracts on Solidity and deploying them on Ethereum and any other EVM compatible networks. Uh, open Zeppelin contracts is the most popular library available out there. Um, we also provide uh, security audit services. You can jump into our blog and see some of the many, many, many audits that we have uh, we have compiled over the years. And uh, roughly a year and a half ago, uh, we launched Open Zeppelin Defender, uh, which is geared towards operational security of smart contract systems. And um, it's what we're going to focus on today in terms of automating operations in your systems. So let's jump to it. The key behind um, this workshop on what we want to share is that smart contract operations are difficult to get right. Uh, it's, not, it's not enough that coding smart contracts is difficult. Also operating and managing them is no easy task. Um, by operations here, I'm referring to monitoring smart contracts, to sending reliably sending transactions in an automated way, setting up automated workflows, uh, doing administration of highly sensitive contracts, and several other tasks that go beyond just coding the contract itself, but making sure it, the entire system runs smoothly. So what we're going to do the world we're going to do today is we're going to pick a, st a case study, which is going to be minting a collectible token whenever, um, whenever an event happens. And this event is going to be a purchase of a particular ERC20 token on a decentralized exchange. So the idea is that we have our project, our project has an ERC20, for instance, and we want to give a price to give some digital swag to users who buy our token. Uh, again, this is just, just as a case study to show how we can bring all different pieces, all building blocks together to accommodate and build, build something that can ship this, that can, that can do this without having to roll out our own servers in a secure way. So the idea is that our users are going to buy, we're going to pick the Uni token from Uniswap itself. We're going to run all of this in ring buy for the sake of the test. And the idea is that users will go ahead and buy Uni out of the uh, Unis out of a Uniswap pool. Whenever this purchase happens, an event is emitted. So what we're going to do is set up a system that is going to monitor for that event. It's only going to look for um, high volume purchases. We don't want to give out swag to just anyone that comes along and buys the token. And after we seed uh, any, of those, any of those purchases, what we're going to do is mint uh, an NFT collectible and send it to the user who made the purchase. This minting is going to require for us to first deploy and what well, create and deploy an NFT contract, but also having a key with the rights to mint new tokens, which is going to be highly sensitive because we don't want anyone to be able to mint our precious collectibles, and also reliably broadcasting it whenever we see any of these events. So in order to bring all of this together, we have several steps for our agenda today. First one is going to be actually monitoring the Uniswap pair for the ERC20 we're working with, which is going to be Union Ring by and uh, Ethereum. So the idea is that we'll look for people who use Ether to buy Uni tokens on Uniswap. Then we'll go ahead and create the 721 token for minting the collectibles set up the hot wallet that is going to act as a minter and eventually automate the minting process and connecting everything together. So this is going to be super hands-on. Uh, so let's get started. Let's start by looking into uh, the Uniswap, uh, Uniswap pool we're going to work with. So what we want to monitor are any purchases of Uni where the user puts at least one if. We're going to use Uniswap version 2, uh, just for the sake of the demo, where staff of version 3 should be pretty similar. 
and we're going to swap uh, to make a swap just to see what this looks like under the hood. Remember, the idea is that we want to build something that is going to monitor any of these purchases restricted by swaps where at least one ETH is purchased. So if we go into the Explorer, we see that Etherscan shows us um, two token transfers where we sent one ETH and we got uh, a certain number of unit tokens back. But what we're interested in here is how we can detect this. So what we're going to do is we're going to look into the events that are fired by this operation. And there is one in particular that is that signals that the swap operation happens. There is a swap event emitted by the Uniswap pair that tells us how much money the user put in and how many tokens, how much if the user put and how many tokens they got out of the operation. So what we're going to do is we're going to monitor for swap events on this address where the amount that goes in is at least one if. And to do that, we're going to use Defender Sentinels. So Defender, as we were mentioning earlier, is a tool that we have been developing that's saying that uh, simplifying and securing operations of smart contracts. And one of the components it has is Sentinels, which is geared towards monitoring contracts. So what we're going to do is begin by creating a Sentinel that's going to monitor um, uni uh, ETH trades, actually uni purchases, because we're going, only going to look for purchases on RinkBuy. This is going to be run on the RinkBuy network. We're supporting several different EVM compatible chains in Defender, both production networks and test networks. And we're running this on this uh, Uniswap pool. So Defender will automatically pull in the ABI of the contract since it's already verified. And what we're going to do is we're going to narrow down which transactions we're looking for. We're not looking for any swap or for any transaction that hits this contract. What we're looking for are swaps where the amount in is at least, uh, sorry, one if. So this way we're restricting trades so that we only monitor for purchases where the user put at least one if into the contract. So if we go back to the transaction we issued a couple of minutes ago, we can actually ask Defender to validate it and see if this transaction matches. And hopefully it will not match because I have asked for the amount to be strictly greater than one if. If I fix that and hit find again, okay, cool. We have a match on the transaction that we have just issued. So whenever, uh, whenever there is a transaction that emits a swap event with this condition, this Sentinel is going to pick it up. You can define the, you can also define conditions on other events, on properties of the transaction, such as gas price, gas use, whether the transaction was successful or not, and a few other things. You can even um, actually attach a code snippet if you need more express more expressivity than just conditions on the events, on the event arguments or function arguments. Now, what should happen when one of these transactions is picked up? Uh, we're going to begin by just sending us an alert. We're going to send a notification via email and Discord that I had already pre-configured. Uh, pre you can use Sentinels to send notifications via email, Slack, Discord, Telegram, or push data to, to Datadog. And now we're just going with email and Discord. And we want to receive a notification whenever this happens. We don't care about any threshold so far. So let's create the Sentinel. It's there, it's running. So if we go back to Uniswap and make another purchase of one if with our account, once this transaction gets mined, what should happen is that we should be getting an alert both via Discord and via email. Um, Sentinels will wait for, uh, for the transaction for one block of confirmation. For production networks, you can choose between one block or six blocks in case you want to be more resilient against reorgs. Uh, but for test nets and for the purposes of the demo, just one single uh, one single block should do. So let me jump into Discord. I have a notifications channel already set up, and as you see here, right now, trust me, it's now five sixteen here in Argentina. We got the notification that the purchase was triggered. Okay. So we have completed the first step on the agenda. We are now monitoring any purchases of Uni using GIF. 
on a decentralized exchange where the purchase is at least worth one ETH. Okay, next step is going to be deploying and creating the ERC-721 contract. Uh, by the way, Jonathan, uh, which you feel free to interrupt me if there are any, any questions or, or anything worth uh, stopping for. Thanks, Paolo. There's been a couple questions and Wichi and I have taken care of them. So we're good right now. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Let's go on to this, on the next item and to, on to the next item, sorry, on creating and deploying the ERC-721 contract. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, one of the products we have at Open Sublin is the contacts library. So I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use the building blocks present there to create and deploy the Sentry 21 contract. To do that, I'm going to leverage the contracts wizard. Uh, we have launched this uh, just a couple of weeks ago. If, if you're not familiar with it, I encourage you to visit wizard.opensupply.com. And you can use this as a point and click interface to bootstrap um, the to any token that you're working with. So, uh, so I'm going to just quickly grab the URL here that I'm going to use. I'm going to use this to bootstrap S21. That's going to be a Defender demo token, it is a symbol. We're going to hold the metadata on this base URL. And I want this token to be mintable, for instance, meaning that I want that um, a privileged account within this, within this contract should be able to mint new tokens on the fly. And uh, also as a feature, I want to use roles as access control. So uh, roles is a library within OpenSupply that allows you to define different roles in the contract and give account uh, permissions, uh, sorry, grant, uh, grant that role to specific accounts. So since that we're um, creating a mintable token, we automat the, the wizard automatically generates for us a mintable role which is by default set to the creator of the token. Later down the road, sorry, later down the road, we'll give this role to a private key that will be specifically for minting. Okay, now that we have the token contract ready with everything we need, we're going to open this on Remix. We're just going to use Remix for deploying it. You can also just download the code if you want to use it on a Truffle or Hardhat setup, for instance. But just to get this out of the way, I'm going to just jump into Remix and uh, use an Injected Web3, which is nothing else than MetaMask, to deploy the Defender demo contract that, that I have just generated. Again, I got here just by clicking Opening Remix from the Contracts Wizard. I'm going to go ahead and deploy this contract, uh, which is prompting MetaMask pop-up. This should take a couple seconds until, until a transaction is mined. But the idea is that uh, without having to set up a new project and install any dependencies, you can bootstrap your ERC20, 721, or 1155 token by handpicking which features you want uh, directly using the OpenSampling Contacts Wizard. So we have uh, the contract deployed. I'm going to copy here the address because I'm going to use it later. And for the sake of it, I'm also going to verify it in Sourceify. If you're not familiar with Sourceify, I encourage you to check it out. It's a service that um, stores metadata of contracts in, uh, for multiple networks and, and what their corresponding address. So it stores the ABI, the source code, all the associated metadata, similar to what Etherscan does, but it's IPFS based, which is pretty cool. Okay, so. We have our ERC721 contract deployed on Rinkby, on the other have already set up. Next step is to set up a wallet that will act as a minter. Basically, this is going to be an address that only us will have access to, and that will have privileges on the SEN21 contract to mint new tokens. Again, we don't want this, we don't want anyone to be able to do this. We are the only ones that will be able to create new instances and send the swag back to our users. So to do that, we're using we're going to use a Defender Relay. A Defender Relay is an Ethereum account that's assigned to your team. I'm going to start by creating now. This is going to be a Defender Demo Minter. And it's going to run on Rinkby. So under the hood, when you create a new relayer, 
Defender is creating a private key on a secure key vault associated to this three layer. So you'll get an Ethereum account that belongs only to you, that only you can control, this is the Ethereum address, and an API key and secret that you can use for interacting with this three layer, for programmatically instructing this three layer to send any transactions. I'm going to copy these keys on the local file I have here. and proceed. Um, by the way, Defender, if you're working on Rink by your girly, will automatically seed your relayer with funds, so you can start interacting with, with it right away. And if you fail to write down your API key, don't worry, you can generate as many API keys as you want. So uh, Defender, after you create a relayer, what Defender gives you is an API that you can use for very, very easily sending relay, really sending transactions using this private key. So I'm going to jump into a snippet of code I have set up. Okay, I'm going to grab the NFT address. So uh, we have created an NPM package, which is called Defender Relay Client. You can use it either standalone or integrated with Ether.js or Web3.js. And what it gives you is easy access to the Defender Relay interface. And this interface gives you an easy way for reliably sending transactions using the private key associ associated to your relayer. So for instance, you can just create an instance of a Defender Relay signer using ethers. And whenever you send a transaction using the signer, what's going to happen under the hood is that Defender is going, is that, sorry, this client is going to send a request to Defender for signing a transaction using the private key and broadcasting it to the network. Not just that, but Defender will also check different gas price oracles to decide what's the best uh, the best gas price to use for this for sending your transaction based on network congestion. It will also automatically manage nonces, so you can be hitting your relayer from different client from different code without having to worry about concurrently sending transactions. And after it's being sent, and by the way, it's sent via different network providers to make sure uh, you have high availability. It's going to keep monitoring the transaction and resubmitting it if it doesn't get mined with increased gas prices. So you can use this as a sort of fire and forget where you just tell Defender that you want to send a transaction and Defender takes care of the entire process of allocating a nonce, a gas price, signing it, broadcasting it and monitoring it until it's actually mined. But I'm not going to run this right now because I'm missing a step. I have to give rights to this address, to the mint address, in order to be able to mint uh, tokens on the Send21 contract that we have created. So to do that, we need to call a, a protected function in our contract, which is grant role. And we're going to do that via Defender Admin. So Defender Admin is another component which is geared towards automatically, um, sorry, manually managing administrative operations on your contracts. So uh, we're going to begin by importing the Defender demo NFT contract into admin. Importing doesn't do anything funny to the contract. It just keeps it under, under Defender's view so you can easily access it and manage it directly from your admin dashboard. And the idea is that you can use Defender to call any administrative operations on the contract. That could be, we have support, first class support for pausing the contract or upgrading the contract. This contract is not upgradable or possible, so this does not apply. But you can call arbitrary admin actions. The admin action is just calling a function. In this case, it's going to be grant role. We're going to grant the minter role, which is identified by this hex value, to the um, defender demo minter we had just created. So by calling this function, from uh, our current MetaMask account that has right over our contract, what we're doing is granting the role, the minter role to the relayer we have just created. If this were a production setup on mainnet, you should have um, a multi-sig setup for controlling your, your NFT contract rather than managing just for an externally owned account. If that were the case, you could include here the address of the, of the Gnosis safe or Gnosis multi-sig that, that you're using. And Defender will automatically route the transaction through it. In this case, we're just going to directly send the transaction. We're going to add some info here. We're granting mint rights to the relayer. And the idea is this 
this information is just for bookkeeping and, so, and for other members of your team that are working together with you and Defender so they can understand what the proposal is about. In this case, since we are the only ones that are directly executing it, it's not that important. But if this were a multi-seed where you need to gather signatures from multiple, from multiple team members, it's important that you give them all the context they need to understand what this proposal, what this change that is about. And the, um, so your teammates could see this information on which function is called, on which contract, which multi series would be being used, and any description, any text, and content you want to share with them so they understand what it's about. But okay, for now, since we are directly controlling the contract, we have been we have allocated minter rights to our relayer. So that means that we have set up and secure a secure hot wallet to act as a minter, which is our defender relayer. Last step is to automate this. And here we can go back to the script I, I was showing you earlier. And so this script is going to leverage the defender relay client package. And uh, it's, also, it's going to use Ether.js as well. As mentioned, you can use it with Web3.js as well, or just um, standalone. And the way you use it is um, we're going to create, by creating a new instance of the Defender Relay signer, we just inject that signer into a con an Ether's contract instance. And from now on, whenever you send a transaction, such as Safe Mint in this case, which is a method from, from our contract, this transaction gets automatically routed uh, through Defender. So this means that if you already have an Ethos.js script, you don't need to make any changes, but just use the Defender Relay signer instead of a local signer for your transactions. Defender also provides a, pro uh, a provider object that gives you direct access to the network. So you can use this also for connecting to the network instead of having to, uh, to procure your own Infure or, Al or Alchemy API keys. Defender will automatically give you a JSON RPC interface for working with it. So I have this main function with all the logic I'm interested in, which is given a recipient and a signer attached to a Defender Relayer and a simple key value storage. What we're going to do is check uh, if we have already minted a token for this recipient. We're using the key value storage to keep track of every, every recipient who has ever received the token. And if they haven't, what we do is we create a new Ethers contract instance for interacting with our NFT contract. And we just mint a token for them and flag them like we have all that we have already sent them a token. And that's it. We don't need any other logic here. I have a local script that sets up all the dependencies. It creates the new Defender, so Defender Relay provider and signer instances using the API key and secret that we got from Defender when we created the relayer and setting up a fake storage layer also. Later, when we we'll run this onto Defender, we'll actually have a key value store at our, at our availability. And we're going to just need the token for this recipient. So I'm going to run the script. And so what this is doing is it's connecting to Defender it's going to use this relayer. This should match the address of the relayer we just created and minting an NFT for this test recipient in this transaction. So if we go to Etherscan to check this transaction, we see that it came from a relayer account. We'll now double check that this belongs to our relayer. It interacted with our NFT token, and we see that there was a Defender demo token transfer from the zero address, meaning it was minted, to the test recipient we we're working with. And if we go back to Defender, remember the address AC88. Go back to the relayer, the Defender demo minter, we see that this is indeed address AC88. So this, this transaction came from the Defender hot wallet we have created and we had appointed as a minter within the contract. So we have all the different pieces together. Uh, we have something that can monitor um, Uniswap swaps for, for purchasing ERC20s. We have our 721 contract with a hot wallet with write to mint new token instances on it. And we have a script that can take care of doing that. Now it's time to bring all of this together. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab all of this code along with uh, an entry point that we're going to use for running this directly within Defender. So 
we're going to go ahead and create a new Autodesk. An Autodesk in Defender is basically um, a Lambda function or a serverless function where we could just provide a snippet of JavaScript with whatever logic we want and that it's tightly integrated to the rest of Defender. So, for instance, we'll, we'll name this the um, mint NFT to uni purchasers. We could define this autotask to run a schedule, such as every 10 minutes, every hour, or whatever it is, or trigger via webhook in case we want to expose it to the outside world for a, maybe a third party integration, a fiat on ramp, or assets meta transactions. We're going to connect this, this to a relayer. So we're connecting this to the Defender demo minter relayer we had set up earlier. And we're just up, we'll add here the code that we have already, um, already set up. You can also uh, update this code via API in case you don't want to be copy pasting code. Not for the sake of the demo, it's just faster to paste it here. So, uh, but we'll, what we want to do is for this code to run whenever the Sentinel picks up a transaction. And actually, we have prepared this code so that in the entry point of this function, we get the information of um, the match transaction by the Defender Sentinel. So within the params injected by Defender, whenever this function is called, if it's called by a Sentinel, it's going to include all the information of the transaction that was picked up. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to extract from the swap event that we're monitoring the two parameter, which is the beneficiary of the purchase. If we go back to Uniswap and we see the transaction we're working with, we see that the swap event has a two parameter that corresponds to here it is the E3D corresponds to the actual purchaser to the address we want to send the collectible to. So the last step now that we have this code within Defender and we have everything wired together so that Defender can execute this code when it's needed, we'll go back to the Sentinel we created at the very beginning configure its notifications. And besides sending us an email and a Discord message, we're also going to trigger the Mint NFT to Uni Purchasers Autotasks. So the Sentinel is going to inject all the information on the, trans on the match transaction to our code snippet and execute it. And the idea is that our code snippet is going to leverage the relayer to send the transaction for minting the NFT. Okay, so now we have everything together. Let's issue another swap transaction from the same address and see what happens. So if we have set up everything correctly, what should be occurring here is that the Uniswap pair is emitting the swap event, which gets picked up by the Sentinel that we have, that we have defined, which is alerting us via email and Discord, but it's also invoking an autotask that contains all the code that we had written for automating the minting process. The Autodesk will leverage a key value store provided by Defender to track who, uh, which addresses have already received the collectible or not. And if it decides that it needs to mint it, it's going to instruct the relayer to do it. So the code from the Autodesk side is just instructing the relayer to send the minting transaction. And the relayer is going to take care of signing the transaction to, by choosing an appropriate gas price, and broadcasting it, and sending it to the network. So if we go back to Discord, we see that we have a, yep another alert on the transaction that, that was mined. And let's see if we go back to Autotask onto the one we had just defined and refresh the runs history. We see that we have from just a minute ago an Autotask run. Uh, triggered by a sentinel, which if we go to the to the logs, we see that it received a match with, uh, again, here it's all the information that the sentinel is injecting into the autotask. It's processing the trade for this recipient using the relay address we just saw, and it minted the NFT for this address on this ring by transaction. So if we go ahead and go back to Etherscan and inspect this transaction. Indeed, we see that it's just from one minute ago, sent from our relayer address to our NFT contract, 
and for the account that made the purchase, which is E3D4, E3D4, it has minted an instance of the Defender demo token we have deployed. So to recap, what we have built here is a system that without having to run any server of our own or having to deploy any infra, automatically monitors a contract that it's not even part of our system, it's good. It looks for specific events with specific conditions. In this case, uh, the amount of ETH um, involved in the purchase being at least one. It alerts us of an event via different communication channels, but it also reacts with logic that we have uh, that we have built into an Autodesk script. And this logic could be as complex as we want. We could be even reaching out to external APIs. Um, Autodesk have access also to a secret vault that you can leverage for having secure API keys for accessing third-party services. It could do whatever, um, whatever queries are needed to eventually work with a relayer to send a transaction, again, in a reliable way to the network. And the relayer takes care not just of facilitating delivery of the transaction, but also of securing the private key, which in this case is super important that it doesn't get leaked because it has rights on our NFT contract for, um, for minting new instances. And we keep in mind we never we set this up this minter relationship by, by using Defender Admin, which you can use for running any administrative operations on your contracts either directly or via multi-signature wallets. So that's it. Um, we have gone end to end through the through the workshop. Time for questions.